Hello, the world's leaders will soon be jetting into Paris for the 2015 UN Climate Summit. Expectations of a breakthrough in the wake of the failure of the Copenhagen gathering five years ago are not exactly stratospheric. Emissions continue to rise, and the scale of industrial development in rising economies is boosting the use of polluting fossil fuels. As the warnings grow ever more apocalyptic, the public response can seem indifferent or downright sceptical. This morning, we're not going to be focusing on the vexed question of exactly how much the climate is changing and why, but if we're failing to tackle global warming, are we better off heeding those who want a full-blown green revolution or those who think adjustments and enlightened self-interest will guide us out of the carbon trap? Round the table are some very distinctive voices in the global debate. Naomi Klein is the author of This Changes Everything, Capitalism versus the Climate. Do you- Naomi, in This Changes Everything, it sounds as if you're using climate change as an opportunity to promote much broader, quite sweeping political change. Would that be a fair assessment? Well, I wouldn't say I'm using it, but I am making the argument that we will not address this crisis given the late date and given the the depths of emission cuts and the speed with which we need to make them without some really radical rejigging of both both in the economic sphere and the political sphere. Um, and uh, and even those sort of gentle reformist uh, roots are kind of are off the table because we need to have a full-throated ideological battle about what values we want to govern our society in a, in a pretty direct way. Um, we, I, you know, the argument I make is that a big part of the reason why we have failed to respond to this crisis has been about epically bad timing. That this hit us at precisely the worst moment, which is. Which is nineteen eighty. in what way? Worse because, so the moment when we we lost all plausible deniability, um, and this is not when the scientists realized or when, when our leaders were alerted, but when this really became a mainstream issue, the turning point was nineteen eighty eight. In in North America, that that is when James Hansen, the leading climate scientist at, at NASA, testified on Capitol Hill and said that he now had a high degree of certainty that this crisis there was a, the crisis was was coming and that there was a there was a was direct connection. all in and that led to the Rio Earth Summit it led to the creation of the IPCC but if we look at what else was happening in 19 19- 1988. The first mega free trade deal was signed between Canada and the U.S. that eventually created NAFTA that eventually became the prototype for the whole so-called free trade era. The Berlin Wall fell the next year. Francis Fukuyama declared history over. And, and, and we were told that there was no alternative to what Joseph Stiglitz calls market fundamentalism. The problem with that is here we have this collective crisis that demands a regulatory response at the very moment when we're told regulation is off the table. You know, it's command and control, and that, and that there's something wrong with the idea of acting collectively.